Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of the Daily Bullet. My name is Paul Lathrop. I'm the Deputy Director of New Media for the Second Amendment Foundation. Joining me today, Mike Uli of the Uli Law Firm in Indiana. Mike, thanks for joining us today, man. Paul, thanks. Always good to see you. So let's let's get into it today as I start getting social media set up. What you wanted to talk about today is uh, uh, reading resources and, and other resources for uh, the gun owner, uh, for somebody who's getting into uh, firearms ownership. Uh, obviously, you know, they've, they've got one resource in front of them right now, the internet. What are some other resources for somebody who's just coming into the firearm world? Well, Paul, once again, thanks for having me. I think uh, maybe I'll break this down a little bit. First of all, um, the Internet's out there, lots of great, great information, but uh, viewers and folks uh, browsing the Internet, uh, and particularly YouTube channels, have got to do, do their due, due diligence with respect to whether or not the information they're gleaning from the Internet is um, reliable or not. Uh, you mean not everything on the Internet is true? That's what I hear. It's not all true. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got to be very careful about that. And I'm, as folks can tell from the gray beard, I'm a little old-fashioned, so I think a good place to start is always probably books. Uh, maybe aside from some in-person training, and I'm not going to talk about this a lot. I know recently you hosted a MAG-40, but if folks can go out there and they can take a MAG-40, a MAG-20, go to Gunsight, train with Clint Smith, Tiger McKee, Tom Givens, John Farnham, the list goes on. Those are all, you know, absolutely phenomenal places to train and get an enormous amount of information and skill in a short amount of time from those folks. But in this day of COVID, which we hope's waning, uh, and folks maybe staying home, and we thought it was appropriate maybe to talk about this, what folks can do in their home, maybe just do some reading and getting on the right track. Um, and I think it's important, kind of, to start out since we're this is a Second Amendment Foundation um, broadcast that we probably ought to talk about the Second Amendment. I know you and Alex talked recently about the New York Rifle and Pistol Association case that's going to be argued here first part of November. We're expecting a decision probably around the first part of June, um, and that's going to be a big case, not to mention a lot of other big Second Amendment Foundation case or Second Amendment cases out there. But one thing I'm going to suggest for folks, we, use the, we talk about the Heller case. Mm -hmm. um, Folks can go out, just Google, or, go, or DuckDuckGo, I don't use Google, DuckDuckGo, um, but just search for that and read the actual opinion from Justice Scalia. It's a wonderful opinion. Uh, we didn't get everything we wanted in that opinion, but it still provides a, a great historical context and some background so that we can better understand uh, what may come out of the Supreme Court next spring or early summer. I guess it'll still be late Late spring is probably the best way to, to uh, characterize that. So that's kind of the first little tip that I would give folks. Sometimes um, folks think that, uh, folks think that uh, court cases are difficult to read, full of gobbledygook. Sometimes they are, but Justice Scalia did a great job, and most of the Supreme Court cases are actually some pretty good reading. So we'd certainly encourage people to go do that uh, number one, if they're interested in the Second Amendment. Um, also, your boss, if his name is on anything, if, you know, uh, we hope that folks contribute to the Second Amendment Foundation. He puts out emails, the Second Amendment Foundation does. Read those. Uh, particularly over time, uh, it will be amazing how much you educate yourself with respect to the Second Amendment. If you read what he puts out and you listen to uh, the Daily Bullet, and the Polite Society podcast over a number of months, you will be better educated about the Second Amendment than most law school graduates. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think that's a, you know, the Second Amendment Foundation is a great source for education. Um, one other thing that I would mention, another author that I'm a fan of is Stephen Halbrook. H -A, me, I've got one of his books, H-A-L-B-R-O-O-K. Uh, he has several books about the Second Amendment. Uh, the last, I had to get some off my bookshelf. Uh, he's got several. The last one I read was Gun Control in the Third Reich. Um, and it I talks actually have about, that one. Yeah, it's a great, I just, that's the last one that I read. Uh, it's a great book. Uh, in some respect, actually in a lot of respects, it's uh, very scary 
uh, in terms of some of the parallels between what happened with firearms in uh, Germany prior to World War II and some of the things that we see occurring in this country. Um, sometimes uh, folks might think that's a little alarmist to compare us to what happened uh, in Germany, but it really isn't. And uh, Stephen Halbrook does a great job uh, in that book and lots of his lots of other uh, uh, books that he has out there. So I'd certainly uh, recommend that to folks as well. If I could, um, I want to throw a book in there too. Uh, I'm, it's actually in the other room, but I was able to pull a fast Amazon search and decoding firearms an easy to read guide on general gun safety and use by John Petrolino good friend of mine um, I've got this book and it's actually an incredibly well-written book not just for the beginner but for intermediate to advanced people as well uh, you can find it on Amazon you can see it right there uh, if, you, if you're looking to help out somebody that's new or again into the intermediate to advanced it's a great book for people so uh, yeah there there's lots of stuff out there and I've I, perhaps I'm not I haven't read that book maybe I'm familiar with it from your comments before um, but you mentioned beginner intermediate advanced I find no matter where folks are at they can pick up a book and you know you're always going to learn something we were talking about motorcycles before and mm -hmm. your experience with motorcycles and even a, even a, quote, basic course, end quote, uh, can provide a lot of knowledge no matter how much experience you have. No question oh, about that. Absolutely. And, and I've been through a MAG-40, which is a beginner's course, many times. Every time I go through a MAG-40, I learn something, whether I'm hosting it and just there as part of the, the safety team or whether I'm going through as a student, as I did again this past spring. No matter when it happens, and no matter what part I'm going through it as, I always learn something new. Yeah, it's funny you say that. I'm gonna. I've taken Mag 40 once. Uh, one of my son, Ryan, uh, one of our sons, hasn't taken it. I'll take it again with him. I suspect I'll learn nearly as much the second time as I did the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not a reflection on Mass's teaching. That's a reflection of the fact that there's just so much great information and. My brain sometimes has a hard time absorbing everything. So anyway, but absolutely the case. Um, you know, another thing I'll mention, the NRA, of course, they have a lot of classes. They just have a basic class. Uh, but their materials for the basic, uh, it's Basics of Pistol Shooting, I think is the title of the course. But that's a great book for folks that are just starting down the path of gun ownership as well. I'd mention that one. Um, so uh, a, a a lot of these things, though, people concentrate, I think, on the gear. Uh, maybe they want to be technically and tactically proficient with a firearm, and that's, that's great. Uh, we need to concentrate on that. You go to MAG-40, that's what that's about to a great extent, uh, not to mention the legal uh, education that you get there. But I think it's important for people to understand they don't need to just to concentrate on the use of the tool, the firearm, uh, and just becoming technically and tactically proficient, but they need to think about uh, maybe some other reading that will help them avoid a potential gunfight uh, because nobody wins in a gunfight if you have to use your firearm in self-defense. Um, so that's one thing that I would suggest to folks that maybe they do some reading in other areas uh, to help them with the avoidance, awareness first, and avoidance of these uh, potentially deadly force encounters because uh, we don't want to become involved in them if we don't have to. Um, some of the things, I don't know if you want me to continue, but I think some of the things that folks may want to consider, I think one really good book is that Gavin DeBecker, The Gift of Fear. Now, I will tell you that in my humble opinion, I doubt that Gavin DeBecker is a staunch advocate for the Second Amendment, but nonetheless, his book is, I think, a very good book because it talks about uh, human intuition. It's focused mostly on females, but there's some, there's some great stories in that book. There are they're not, not, it's not a novel, they're uh, purportedly true stories, but they're stories that help us understand the fact that we as human beings have had eons and eons of development of our psyche and our intuition, and in the modern world, sometimes we don't trust that like we should. Uh, our intuition has been honed over thousands of years, and we probably ought to trust it in uh, a lot of situations. And if we can trust that intuition, um, pay attention to that intuition, 
uh, it may help us avoid situations that would require us to use force in some respect. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the uh, major things I love about doing this show live is we get commentary from the people. And sometimes, and I think this is one of those times that that, that, that commentary makes us take a hard turn and uh, and takes makes the show go a whole different direction. And I think that's going to happen here because I don't know about you, Mike, but uh, I, I certainly have some things I want to say about that. Raven Wolf asks, can we still rely on the NRA in general? Um, I'm going to let you have first crack at this. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, I'm a lifetime member of the NRA. Um, I have been. I will say that the NRA was has been around since the end of the Civil War. It was primarily developed as a training organization initially, as a result of uh, mil the military officers not being happy with the marksmanship skills of the NRA. Um, so, as a training organization, I think it's still a very, very valuable um, organization. Now. There, I can still remember, and you notice I've been squirming in my seat here a little bit to answer this question because this is a difficult one, but I remember being in Indianapolis at the NRA show when they had all the, the hubble who first started, at least publicly, um, with uh, Oliver North uh, being, you know, uh, him kind of going butting heads with uh, Wayne LaPierre. I guess what I'll say at this, at this juncture is, is that I am, as a, and I'm not speaking for anybody but myself, but I'm disappointed that there's not been some drastic changes at the NRA. Uh, I would like those drastic changes to take place um, so that they can again assume their position in uh, support of the Second Amendment in this country. I don't know when those changes are going to occur, but I think they need to occur um, sooner rather than later. Um, was that diplomatic I, enough? I don't know. That works for me. Spoken like a true, true attorney. Um, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I need to couch my reply just as diplomatically. I am employed by the Second Amendment Foundation. And we are not a competitor of the NRA. We are a companion of the NRA. Uh, Alan... Gottlieb has said himself, and I agree with this, the entire Second Amendment movement is better with a strong NRA. Uh, my personal belief is the NRA would be stronger with a different leadership team. I wish that would happen. Uh, I, I, I do not want to spend the entire second half of today's show talking about the NRA, although I have a feeling that may happen. But um, I uh, let's just say there I have grave concerns about the handling of the NRA's business and some of the things that I've seen that have been made semi-public that have come to my attention since the NRA has had its issues. Uh, start going back to the split with Ackerman McQueen. So that's that's yeah, kind of where I sit with it. I absolutely, dis I absolutely agree with you. Uh, keep in mind, in my mind, even before the troubles at the NRA, the Second Amendment has, a foundation has always been the leader in Second Amendment litigation mm -hmm. in the courts. They've always done the best job in the courts, in my estimation, um, and that continues today. The NRA's place, at least in my estimation, one guy's opinion, was in the legislative side. Uh, they were always um, very influential. It seems, I don't have all the facts, it seems that most of the effort of late has been spent on defending some of the allegations that are out there. Absolutely, and I I wish there was a way for this to end quickly and end it end with a strong and resilient NRA. Excuse me, NRA. I, I as well am a lifetime member. I did not give that up when I when I became an employee of the SAF. I do not intend on giving it up. I intend on remaining a lifetime member of the NRA for the rest of my life because I bought it as a lifetime membership. 
Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, here we go. Go ahead. I suspect you're right. There's going to be a stream of comments now. Yeah. Uh, here we go. At New York Outcast, I'm a Jew-A guy. The NRA needs to be restructured, in my opinion. Yeah, I... Uh, we, I, I, if I, I could have invited people on that are very familiar with what's going on, that have strong opinions about it. I have a lot of friends that that would, we're we're just not set up for this right now. We neither Mike nor I have really prepared to talk about this today. Uh, to be honest, after my stroke, I can prepare for about one topic one 30-minute topic per day. And this wasn't even in my wheelhouse for next week. So I'm, I'm way out of my league talking about this one, this one yeah. today. Well, one thing I would say, Paul, that's not so much about the NRA, but whatever your inclinations are with respect to what's happened at the NRA, please don't let that stop you from supporting the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. that, that comment about supporting GOA, great. Uh, support the Second Amendment Foundation. Support some uh, Second Amendment advocacy group that, that you're comfortable with because we need to continue to support groups that fight for the Second Amendment. Absolutely. And you will never, ever, ever hear me say, give up your, your, your membership to the NRA. A lot of people have. I will never say that. We need a strong NRA. I want to get one more comment and then uh, uh, one, two more comments because he just added a second one. I want to get two more comments and then I want to try and go back to the uh, uh, to our previously scheduled topic. <laughs> but uh, Clover Tack chimes in. If you only look at the NRA with a political lens, sure, but the NRA is, is and always has been a strong force for societal change through education, training, outreach, safety, etc. But those elements really have little to do with Wayne and the higher ups of the organization, but rather the grassroots. You're right, Clover Tech. I guess my my problem with the NRA does have to do with the higher ups, and and with I I do really really support what the NRA does with training. I do really really support what the NRA does with conservation. They, the NRA is, I'm going to say, probably one of the, the, is certainly the nation, if not the worldwide leader in conservation. Um, and that's all through their membership. It's not, Wayne LaPierre, I, I, he, he takes too damn many jet trips to even think about conservative, conservative you know what I'm mean, trying to say. Anyway, <laughs> All right. Uh, let's let's see. Let's let's go back to uh, let's go back to our previously again our our our, our topic to sure. start with. Well, I'll mention another book too. We talked a little bit about some history for the Second Amendment. We talked about some things that you probably ought to look at to to bolster your avoidance and awareness skills. Uh, another uh, another book in that area, Steve Tarani, uh, T A R A N I, has a book called Prefence that I think is a good book in the awareness and avoidance category. Um, but something else I'll mention: if as we prepare, you know, ourselves for a potential self-defense situation that we hope never comes, another book. There's a some people might uh, scoff at this a, a bit, but Colonel Dave Grossman uh, wrote like, several books, but one called On Combat. And it talks about the psychological and physiological reactions um, that people have in a self-defense encounter. And the reason I mention that is because the more we're prepared for an event that's going to be incredibly stressful, and the more that we understand about what will happen in that life or death situation, the better we're going to be able to react to that situation and survive it. So that's a book that I think folks should read. It's based to a large extent on military experiences. Um, there are some law enforcement experiences in there, but I think that's definitely worth the read. I think it may, be, may even be available in audiobook, but I would commend people to that just to prepare them for that situation because it, when you get to that life or death situation, you're going to have to make legal decisions, and then you're going to have to make tactical and technical decisions at the same time. So the more we understand about that pressure, the more we're going to be able to deal with it. So that's another book. Once again, to help us maybe avoid the situation, but certainly prepare and make better decisions when we get to those life or death situations. Um, 
If Go I, ahead. I want to bring up a couple uh, uh, books here. I'm trying to rapidly scroll notes to myself so that because my 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 brain will forget just as quickly as they come to it these days but if we're talking about situational awareness one of the best authors i've ever read in that neighborhood is rory miller i cannot remember any specific books uh that he's written the titles but i know rory miller is an absolute go-to uh for situational awareness and that type of thing uh, and uh, another one, uh, going back to the the uh, the the grandfather of the self defense industry, uh, and that's Masada Yub and his very first in the gravest extreme. If you haven't read that one, I would say that would be the very first one to start with. I I was going to talk about that book. I have it right here. I think it's his best work. I can't get it in the picture, but that I have it right there. <laughs> It's, it's a little dated in terms of when it was published, but mm -hmm. not in terms of the information that's contained therein and the usefulness, usefulness of that book. That's the place I would start, uh, particularly when people are talking about legal training and making those uh, legal decisions that are associated with a self-defense situation. Absolutely. Um, Rory Miller, by the way, I'll mention this, and a disclaimer, I'm a member of the Armed Citizens Legal Defense Network. Mm -hmm. I'm an affiliate attorney with the Armed Citizens Legal Defense Network. Um, I have enormous respect for Marty and Gila Hayes, um, the folks that work there that are on the board, Jim Fleming, I'll miss somebody, um, John Farnham, Masada Yub, um, Dennis Tuller, I'm sure I'm missing some folks. But anyway, they have, number one, there's a, a monthly newsletter that comes out that's just filled with great information. And once again, if you read that over the course of a year, it's gonna, you're going to measure yourself what you learn and pick up. But the other thing, when you're a member of the Armed Citizens Legal Defense Network, one of the things they send you immediately, and I think um, this is what your uh, comment uh, about Rory uh, jogged my memory here, the, ma the ma educational materials that they send out with a membership are worth the price of admission for several years. Um, they've done a great job with that educational material. So uh, no matter what you think about, you know, what the best programs are out there, uh, if you're involved with a program that might help you after a self-defense uh, situation, their educational materials are first rate. There's no question about that. Uh, I want to get in this one. We're starting to get in comments about about the uh, uh, books and uh, Clovertack says there's a book called Glock the Rise of America's Gun and if it is read with a little 2A mindset Glock did some pretty cool stuff at heading off gun control efforts stopping them before they started etc yeah I'm, I don't know if you are Paul I'm not familiar with that book um, I so know I, I of the really... book. I've not read it. Uh, it's been out for several years. I just haven't read the book yet. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that or the content. Um, you know, I don't. I don't. I'm not an expert on what Glaston Glock thought, thinks about or thought about uh, gun control, but uh, it sounds like that might be a good place to start. Um, and uh, John Lloyd Sharp says there's more. There is case law more current in the newer books. Yeah, I mean, the, what in the gravest extreme was written in the eighties, but uh, and, and and yeah, some of his newer stuff has more current case law, but the basics are always going to be the basics, and and I don't think, I don't think the basics will ever really change that much. Yeah, conceptually, there's really been no, I mean, not, not been huge changes. And by the way, I mean, Mass has written some books since then, which are great too, but conceptually, I think the foundation and the roots remain the same, and that's still a great place to start. And I'll mention another book from one of his more recent books um, as well. It's called Straight Talk on Armed Defense, and I was going to say it came out a couple of years ago, but it probably came out five years ago, I'm not sure, but it's sort of a compil. it's edited by Mass, but it's a compilation of, uh, of various authors who contributed to this book, and I think it's a great place for folks to start, too. Um, I'll talk about William April in a minute, but he's got a, who's obviously passed away, in, uh, I'm going to say a year or two ago, um, and that was a huge, huge loss for 
um, the uh, Second Amendment community and the training community. But William April, uh, I think Mass has a section. Uh, Craig Douglas has a section. Jim Fleming, Tom Givens, Marty Hayes, John Hearn has got some great stuff. Uh, and there are others as well. But I would commend folks to that book as well. It's a little more, it's not as dated, and I hate to use that word, because the, In the Gravest of Stream is really not dated except in when it was published. But that's another book that's great, Straight Talk on Armed Defense, by edited by Masada Yu. So another yeah. one to take a look at. Absolutely. And before we, you know, we're coming down towards the bottom of the hour, before we go, I'm gonna as as we when we as always when we talk trading there I I usually and I'm gonna again today say nothing will ever replace in person training. Go get some. Uh, you you can read about it all you want. You can uh, you can practice in your home all you want, but if you pr only perfect practice creates perfect. If you are practicing bad habits, you're gonna ingrain bad habits. Go get yourself in front of a competent trainer. It's worth 10 times whatever you're going to spend on it. Amen. No question about that. Um, and like we said in the beginning, if you can get to one of Mass's Mag 40, get to Gunsight, like I said, Tiger McCree, Key, Tom Givens, the list goes on, do it. Uh, but these the reading... Uh, your own home, I mean, you're doing your own homework before you go can help you get a little bit more out of that in-person training as well. All right, Roderick has a great comment in here. If anyone is interested in 14th Amendment application of the Second Amendment to the states, no state shall abridge by Michael Kent Curtis, 1986, securing civil rights by Stephen Holbrook, 2010. 14th Amendment and the Privileges and Immunity, and that's as far as my software carries it. The comment is longer than that. Go ahead and uh, head over. That That's on the Facebook side if you want to get the entire comment. Uh, <clears throat> and this, I think John Lloyd Scharf has been to a mass class because deadly force is justified only when undertaken to prevent an imminent and otherwise unavoidable danger of death or grave bodily harm to the innocent. That sounds like Mass himself could have said that. Yep, I think that's an accurate statement. Of course, the unavoidable is, depend, you know, that gets into the stand your ground issue that we won't get in here into here in a minute or two, but I think that's an accurate statement. Yep. All right. Well, yeah, we are at the bottom of the hour, so uh, I think we should probably think about wrapping this one up, Mike. All right. Well, it's been good to talk to you, and um, hope folks maybe they can get a book this weekend and read it. Absolutely. On the way out the door, one more book recommendation, although this is more on the political end, and that book is Warnings Unheeded, Twin Tragedies at Fairchild Air Force Base. We this is uh, that's a book by an, a man named Andy Brown. I've had a, a chance to meet Andy myself. Uh, this is from the incident at Fairchild Air Force Base. I believe it was in the early '90s when a gunman who went and shot up the hospital there at Fairchild Air Force Base. But this guy, everybody knew he was going to go off. Andy Brown was the security officer that had to take him down, and the, the book. I mean, it, it's a tra it's, it's the way the best way to describe it is, it's a train wreck. You know, it's going to be a train wreck. You want to look away, but you can't. You have to see it through, and uh, Andy does a great job at, at at explaining it and explaining the aftermath of what happened to him. It, it, that's that's the other great thing you're gonna get out of this. It's he's he's he, he took a person's life justifiably, and it still affected him. And it, it he takes you through that too. So um, that's my last recommendation on the way out the door. Again, thank you, Mike, and everybody. Come join us. Me come join me again next week, Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. Central Time, for more Daily Bullet. Thanks for watching, everybody.